Uh, good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's so great to see you. Uh, the vast majority of our in-person audience is on this side of the building, so I feel like I need to tilt that way. Um, and that's no nothing about body stuff over there. I hope that that was a little... Um, anyway, good morning. Uh, I just got myself into a little bit of a hole. Um, it's great to have you here at worship. Uh, just a few things about our worship here this morning. Uh, first, if you are present in the room with us, um, know that we value your prayer requests, and we have not yet transitioned to having the purple prayer cards in the in the seats, uh, but we will be doing that. Uh, you'll hear a, a little bit more about that at the end of the service today. So if you have a prayer request, just fill out a purple prayer card and put it in the basket at the back of the room. If you're watching online, uh, simply put your prayer request into the Facebook chat and we will make sure to include that in worship as well. Uh, communion will be a part of our worship service today. If you're uh, here in person, we're gonna invite you forward to receive communion. If you're not yet comfortable coming forward to, re, uh, to participate in God's meal, there are pre-packaged communion elements at the back of the room. We, can, we invite you just to enjoy the meal, uh, God's meal of love and forgiveness at your seats. If you're at home, you'll want to grab some communion elements uh, to participate in the meal uh, that way. Uh, that all being said, uh, we're going to start our worship service today by reading our land acknowledgement together, and then we'll uh, join in singing our opening songs. So I invite you to please read uh, what's on the screen with me. People of Hope is located on the original and ancestral homelands of the Wapatawan peoples, and we give thanks for their presence here since time immemorial. We also wish to recognize and honor all our indigenous siblings who have and continue to call this land their home. I invite you to join in singing our opening song.
Send me, send me. No, I don't deserve it, but I'll be your servant. Send me. Here we go. If you cannot speak like angels, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all. If you cannot rouse the wicked with the judgment's dread of love, you can lead the little children to the Savior's waiting arms. Send me, send me. Help me out. Send me. Sorry, Mike, I'll wait for the queue next time. Good morning. <laughs> uh, my name's Matt Morsey. I'm one of the volunteer worship leaders here at People of Hope. Welcome to worship today. It's great to see so many faces uh, in person. I was one of the people on that side, and I was not offended at all, Dan, just so you know. So, um, uh, uh, All you need uh, uh, for words and songs and everything will be on the screens, uh, either on your computer or tablet or device at home or on the screens here. Um, there, uh, uh, as a reminder, there's purple prayer cards in the back, and you can submit your prayer requests online um, in, the, in the chat. Um, let's gather with a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for this amazing day filled with grace, filled with your love, and we thank you for the slight glimpse of snow that we saw to know that winter is indeed coming for those of us that do like the snow. Uh, thankful that we didn't get as much snow as the folks up north did. And we are extremely grateful uh, for all of the amazing folks that make things happen here at church and all of the amazing good works that we do. And all God's people said. Amen. We can song. Or confession song. Confession song. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
each hour of the day and of the night. Hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of night. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful As hard as we try for perfection and to be the Christians that we want to be, sometimes we, we fall down and we make mistakes, but we can bring those mistakes here and lay them, uh, uh, lay them upon uh, Jesus and, and ask for forgiveness. And so at this time, we will do our confessional prayer. Please join me. God of all creation, you are great above all. You created everything. You are our breath and life. Give us ears to hear, even when it is difficult to hear or understand you. Forgive us for not listening to ourselves, to those around us, and most importantly, to you. Help us to forgive the ones we feel wronged by. Move us to be agents of change, unsatisfied with an unjust world. Remind us of your love again and again, Ignite us to be your loving and faithful presence in the world. For you are the ultimate giver of all good things. Amen. So I'm going to share something real quick. Um, so those of you that have heard me up here before know that God speaks to me a lot through music and through song. And um, this is oftentimes when I will reference a song and there's another one that hit me uh, very recently, so I'm going to read you some lyrics from a song by Francesca Battistelli called Free to Be Me. And it goes like this. Sometimes I believe that I can do anything, yet other times I think I'm, I've got nothing good to bring. But you look at my heart and tell me that I've got all you seek. And it's easy to believe, even though I've got a couple dents in my fender, fender I've got a couple rips in my jeans, trying to fit the pieces together. Perfection is my enemy. But on my own, I am clum I'm so clumsy, but on your shoulders, I can see. So remember, no matter how many dents you've got in your fenders or rips you have in your jeans, you are loved and you are forgiven and you are worthy of that amazing gift. that evermore lifted heavy heads above. upon every shade, Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For Thyself was gifted Great, great love of thine, peace on earth and joy in hell. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Morning. Deuteronomy is for the most part. Oh, sorry, I got hold my mic. Sorry about that. We lost the connection. There we go. Sorry, this is better. Some people call Deuteronomy one sermon by Moses. Actually, it's 33 chapters of sermons, plural, for Moses. Imagine, if you will, you've been wandering through the wilderness for 40 years. 
you're standing in the plain of Moab. The Jordan River is just to the west. You can almost smell the milk and honey that's promised from this land of Canaan, the land that God's given you. The people who are with you today are not the people who left Egypt. That whole generation, two generations, have died. The only two humans who left Egypt are Moses and Joshua of Nun, who will take over after Moses dies. So we're going to jump into one of Moses' early sermons in Deuteronomy. But no, at the end of the chapter, he teaches this group, a million plus strong, a song. He blesses each tribe. And then he goes up on the mountain. God shows him the promised land because he doesn't get to go there. And then he dies. Joshua takes over. But enough of that. From Deuteronomy chapter 8, we're using the message translation today. Moses says, Make sure you don't forget God, your God, by not keeping his commandments, his rules and regulations that I command you today. Make sure that when you eat and are satisfied, build pleasant houses and settle in, see your herds and flocks flourish and more and more money come in, watch your standard of living going up and up. Make sure you don't become so full of yourself and your things that you forget God, your God, the God who delivered you from Egyptian slavery. Do not forget the God who led you through that huge and fearsome wilderness, those desolate, arid badlands crawling with fiery snakes and scorpions. Do not forget the God who gave you water gushing from hard rock. Do not forget the God who gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never heard of, in order to give you a taste of the hard life, to test you so that you would be prepared to live well in the days ahead of you. If you start thinking to yourselves, I did all this, and all by myself, I'm rich, it's all mine, well, think again. Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all this wealth so as to confirm the covenant that he promised to your ancestors as it is today. If, if you forget, forget God, your God, and start taking up with other gods, serving and worshiping them, I'm on record right now as giving you firm warning. That will be the end of you. <laughs> I mean it. Destruction. You'll go to your doom, the same as the nations God is destroying before you. Doom, because you wouldn't obey the voice of God, your God. Our next reading is from the book of Luke. At Theo Thursdays, that's uh, a Bible study, for the next Sunday's text that is offered here at People of Hope every Thursday at noon, mark it on your calendars, we had a fantastic discussion because going around the table we had like five or six different translations of the Bible, whether you're at home with your favorite Bible or here with your favorite Bible or text following along. It's amazing how one or two words that are translated differently change the whole meaning. BibleGateway.com, BibleGateway.com has 62 English translations of the Bible. Check it out. So from Luke, Jesus tells a parable. This is the message translation. Jesus told them a story showing that it was necessary for them to pray consistently and never quit. Jesus said, there was once a man in some city who never gave God a thought and cared nothing for people. Now a widow in that city kept after him. My rights are being violated. Protect me. Oh, this judge never gave her the time of day. But after this went on and on, the judge said to himself, oh, I care nothing what God thinks, even less what people think. But because this widow won't quit badgering me, I'd better do something and see that she gets justice. Otherwise, I'm going to end up beaten black and blue by her pounding. 
Then Jesus, the master, said, Do you hear what that judge, corrupt as he is, is saying? So what makes you think God won't step in and work justice for his chosen people who continue to cry out for help? Won't God stick up for them? I assure you, he will. He will not drag his feet. But how much of that kind of persistent faith will the Son of Man find on earth when he returns? Thus ends our readings. Uh, young member missionaries, if, sorry, young member missionaries, if you'd like to come up front, Pastor Dan has a young missionary message for you all. And thanks for being here today. You're all awesome. Got it, Larry? Yeah. Hey, friends. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Ben, you seem kind of sad. What's up? You're what? You're sore from what? Because you're getting old and sometimes when you get out of bed, you're just sore? Because that happens to me now. Yeah. It's a new, oh, his knee in soccer. So I bet you're sore too. What's going on at the Blackburn house that everyone's sore? Man. Good job. Oh, you went to a party. Okay, so I'm glad that you're not sore anymore, even though yesterday you were. So I have a question for you. Have you ever wanted something really, really bad and you've went to your mom or dad and say, said, I want this, I want this, and when, want this, and they've said, stop talking to me about that right now, we'll talk about it later. Raise your hand if, you, if that's happened to you, okay? Now, if you've done that and you've gone back to them and said, mom, dad, I really, really want this. Can we get it? Can we get it? Please, please, please. Have they then all, all said again, be quiet, we'll talk about it later. Raise, that, raise your hand if that's happened to you again. Now, when I grew up with my mom, I would keep asking and asking and asking, and my mom would always say, Dan, we'll talk about it later. 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 And then she finally would say, stop talking about it. We're not going to get it. Has that ever happened to you? Right? Yeah. Just this constant badgering of, I want this thing, I want this thing, and then nothing happening. Well, Uwe was telling me about a similar experience that he has with his parents. He, he really likes ice cream. In particular, he likes bubblegum ice cream. How many of you like bubblegum ice cream? Right? Some of you do, right? Especially those frozen pieces of bubblegum. Ooh, so tasty. Yeah. And Uwe go, likes to go to his parents all the time, and he begs and begs and begs them for bubblegum ice cream, but guess what? They say, no, it's not, it's not good for you to have bubblegum ice cream all the time, Ube. You'll break your teeth. That's why he has no teeth, by the way. You have a loose tooth, right? Sometimes you've got to eat vanilla ice cream, or sometimes you've got to eat chocolate ice cream or strawberry ice cream. You can't always get bubblegum ice cream. Yes, Riker. Yeah, very good job. Yes, you got to eat healthy as well. Well, anyway, this Ube story reminded me a little bit about the story that we just heard uh, Larry read about this, this lady who goes to this judge who says that she wants justice for something that had, bad, that had happened to her. And she goes and she goes and she begs and she begs. And the judge doesn't really care about her at all. But finally, the judge says, okay, I'll give this lady what she wants, just so she'll stop bothering me. My guess is that sometimes your parents also cave in just so you stop bothering them as well. Right? Yeah, it's not a good strategy. I'm on the other side of that equation now. Know that it's not a good strategy, right? Well, sometimes people think about the same thing with God, right? Like we ask God for certain things, we want God to do certain things, and God doesn't answer those prayers. Just like Ube asking his parents for bubblegum ice cream, and instead they give him vanilla ice cream. And that's kind of how it works with God sometimes. Even though we pray and we pray for certain things to happen, those things might not happen. But God still hears those prayers and might answer those prayers in a different way. So Ube still gets ice cream, just not with frozen pieces of bubblegum in it. All right? So today we are going to say a prayer to God just to work in us to have patience to understand 
is that God sometimes answers our prayers in ways that are unexpected for us. All right, so I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask that you pray after me. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day, for these people, for Ube, ice cream, and for understanding parents. Help us, God, to recognize that you always answer our prayers even though sometimes you answer them in ways we didn't expect. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, you can go back to your seat. You can give Ube a high five if you want to. He's kind of got a limp, limp hand there, so but you can hug him, whatever. You can do, yeah. He's got awesome. a broken arm. Yeah, it's not a broken he got, arm. He high five. A noodle arm. <laughs> noodle arm. God makes peace within us. God makes peace between us. The peace of God is here to stay. I invite you to please stand as you're able to share a sign of God's love and peace with one another. Just a handshake this morning, okay, Riker? I have a little bit of a sore throat, so I don't want to... Good morning, Riker. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm a little off the rails this morning but I'm going to blame my spouse, which is really convenient because my spouse isn't in the room. Um, she uh, left uh, for a work conference in Las Vegas this morning, and I had to take her to the airport at about a quarter to four, um, which is okay most of the time. Uh, the problem that's caused this morning is that I've had like three whole pots of coffee at this point. So I'm bouncing off the wall. So sorry about uh, how easily I'm distracted this morning. Um, I'm also distracted uh, because I woke up this morning to take Karen to the airport and do what I usually do, kind of go over all my sermon notes and go, went over all my preparation uh, for today. And I thought I knew where I was going to go in my preaching. But guess what? Matt messed it up for me this morning. <laughs> Matt messed it up for me uh, with the song lyrics that he read. The song lyrics about, uh, you know, having holes in jeans and, 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 not, and messing up and, 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 and about not putting all this pressure on ourselves to be perfect. Um, I suffer from the idea that I have to be perfect all the time. And when I get praise, or when people thank me for doing things that I do, sometimes that can give me a little bit of an inflation of an ego. I tend to not be too egotistical, I think, but that might be egotistical to say, right? But sometimes when I get great feedback, I think I'm, I'm pretty darn awesome, right? And I got some of that feedback last night. Uh, you know, uh, if you're a regular member missionary here at People of Hope, or if you uh, have got emails from us, or follow us on Facebook, or whatever, uh, that, that Karen and I, is, along with Cindy and Marilyn, uh, went yesterday uh, to Peace United Methodist, Peace Uni United Church of Christ, sorry, uh, to participate in a counter-protest. You see, Peace, uh, pre-pandemic, had a history of doing a drag queen bingo event uh, to raise funds for various ministries throughout the city of Rochester. They were unable to do it for the past couple of years, but resumed that activity yesterday. 
And they publicized it, and lots of people in the community were happy about it, but there were some people who weren't happy about it. Some people who, who, who thought that the idea of having a, 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 a drag show in a church, no matter how pure and innocent it was, was blasphemous. And it was the act of this, this, this group of people to groom kids. Now, I'm not going to describe what grooming is this morning. If you've not heard of that term before, I'm more than happy to talk to you about it um, after worship today, because you need to know that's absolutely not, was not happening yesterday. Anyway, this event was so well publicized that uh, uh, an organization in the Twin Cities read about and decided to come protest. So people showed up at, uh, at Peace UCC uh, wearing uh, baklava-type masks, all in black, with uh, Kevlar vests, carrying guns and knives and bullhorns and signs, and they decided that they needed to confront every single person who was coming to this event. Now, my friend Paul, the pastor at Peace UCC, reached out to local clergy at the end of last week saying, we're aware that this group is going to come and protest and make people feel very, very uncomfortable. If you have time and are willing and able, can you show up? and let people know that they are loved and welcomed and that they have a place here. I got that email and right away I sent it out to you. I sent a message to Karen saying, hey, I think I'm going to go to this. And she's like, I'm going to go with you. And I'm like, awesome. Um, and we showed up. And not only did the four people from People of Hope show up, but there are pastors from Mount Olive who showed up and other concerned community members. So that we kind of outnumbered those who were protesting about two to one. And, and throughout the course of the four hours that we were standing outside of this church, this place of God, raising funds to feed hungry people in our community, to help people who are on the margins in our community, to uh, support uh, uh, young men and women of color, in our community, we were barraged with very, very hateful speech. We were called everything uh, from perverts. Uh, we were condemned to go to hell. Uh, the Pastor Paul was told that he was Satan incarnate. I was standing there in my clergy collar, told I was a pedophile because I was there welcoming people in. Now, everything, it's kind of what I was expecting, but everything ended, ended calmly. There was no violence, which I was concerned about. And we all went home at around 7 o'clock. Pretty quickly, I started getting messages from people who were at that event. I'm a pretty public figure, right? Standing there in my clergy collar, introducing myself as Pastor Dan from People of Hope. Lots of thank yous. Thank you for being here. Thank you for, for preaching uh, Jesus' gospel of love and acceptance. Thank you for being here as being a man of God. And pretty soon my ego kind of got inflated. I'm like, yes. Awesome work, Dan. Best work all week. Best work all year. And as I was sitting there thinking about it, taking all this credit for this good work, I'm like, that's absolutely in opposition to what I'm supposed to preach tomorrow morning. This message from Deuteronomy, this message of don't think that you're hot stuff. Don't think that you can make it on your own, because you can't. All the things that you have, all the things that you do, are inspired and given to you by our Lord God, who loves you. And that's what this Deuteronomy verse says. Don't get a big head. Remember that God is doing all this stuff. Now I say this this morning because, you know, I can get a, a big, big ego every once in a while. 
But I also think that communities of faith can develop a pretty healthy ego every once in a while. Like, communities of faith can think that we have all our stuff together, that we're a a nice, welcoming, inclusive place. And that if people would just show up, they would see how awesome we are instead of how awesome God is. And we forget this fact that we have such great communities that everyone should just want to show up, and we forget this command to go out there and share God's love with other people. Not our love, but God's love. Well, our love too, which is manifested out of the love that God has for us. Larry mentioned earlier... um, this morning about this Thursday Bible study, and we had a great discussion about this uh, Deuteronomy verse, especially the last portion of these Deuteronomy verses where God seems to pass judgment on people who forget God. And I asked a challenging question to those who were sitting around the table, and they pushed back on me, which is so much fun, and that is, where in this verse does it actually say that God is going to destroy the people? It just says that they're going to experience destruction. And the reason I brought that, for, that question forward is because I think that's what happens when we forget that we are called to be reflections of God's light in the world. We experience destruction. We experience a breakdown of character. We experience a breakdown of faithfulness. We experience a breakdown of love. And that if we simply continue to recognize that we're not in charge of the car that we're driving... Life is going to be much better for us. Now there's questions too about who, who, are, those, who are those people who are left behind. Uh, one, of our, one of our folks at that Bible study talked about how, 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 how they always feel like they're in that, in that group that's, that's left behind. That group that is on the outside. And reading from, understanding where she's coming from, sorry, It's mostly women, so I feel comfortable saying that. Um, Understanding where she's coming from, I can totally get that. But I wonder how many of us feel like on the outside, too. When we look at other people and we admire the way that they talk or admire their faithfulness, not recognizing that that, that, that's really a reflection of, of, of God and blessedness coming through that person, we look at folks and say, I really wish I was more like them. We start this negative talk in our heads that we're not worthy enough, that we don't have our stuff together, that we have holes in our pants, right? That we're not perfect. I think the reading today reminds us, and the song lyrics that were so profound today reminds us that we're not called to be perfect. We're just called to be faithful. We can't be perfect. Which was an interesting discussion that I had with one of the protesters last night. They weren't too happy with me about that. Um, But we can't be perfect. We're called to be faithful. We're called to remember that, that, that God is in charge and that we are God's beloved. So siblings in Christ, I'm sorry this was kind of scattered. I'll preach that at our sermon on other day. It'll be the first time I ever preach on Deuteronomy, by the way. But I want you to go away today knowing this. God loves you. God's always going to love you. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to feel like you have everything together. You don't even have to feel like you're in charge of anything. God's going to love you. And remember, all the good things that you do and all the good things that we do as a community of faith that have an impact on the world in ways that we we might not recognize, it's not really our, our work. It's God's work. We're simply God's hands and feet in the world, operating and spreading this message of love. And after I witnessed what I witnessed yesterday, the world needs to hear that message of love louder and louder every single day. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our after sermon song in Christ alone.
In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone is brown, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, the God flesh, fullness of God in heaven. This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the depth of pride. From the grave he rose again. As he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me. My all in bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life. In death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns. So I'm not building a liturgical resume by any means, but it's good to know that I can add completely derail a pastor's sermon <laughs> to that list. <laughs> um, not, not my intent, obviously, but uh, um, I, I love when God winks happen in my life, and that was one because I, again, I don't know why I went to those lyrics. I think God was just saying, and sure enough, it kind of snowballed, and we got to see the amazing gift that that man has because to just freewheel and do what he just did was pretty awesome. So, um, but uh, now we've come to the point in our service where we are uh, going to share our, our common faith statement with millions of Christians uh, throughout the world. So at this time we will do the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, this place, uh, as also the treasurer for this uh, church, the time, talents, and treasures that uh, uh, the folks at this uh, amazing place uh, share, uh, I, I marvel at. Uh, one of those things happened this week when we replaced, or at least attempted to replace some of the lights in here, and that's a 
um, a long story, but uh, uh, anyways, it's a little brighter in here, it's a lot brighter out there, so thanks for the folks that made that happen with their talents and their, uh, and their treasures. Um, there's an uh, offering uh, uh, box in the back, and you can also find ways online to give um, as well. We're going to continue with the prayers of the church this morning. So if you are online and you have not submitted a prayer request yet, feel free to do so. Um, I've collected the prayer request from the back of the room, so I invite you to please pray with me. I'll end every prayer petition with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond here our prayer. So let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we thank you for this day of grace. We thank you for bringing us here together um, as your beloved um, children. Uh, regardless of, uh, of, of everything going on in our lives, um, thank you for bringing us here uh, to be with one another, uh, to worship and praise you. And God, we come together and gather today as, as praying people. So we offer these prayer requests to you, knowing that you know them already, but offering them so we can st stand in solidarity with one another uh, during our times of needs and during the time of celebration. So please receive these prayer requests. We pray for a classmate of a member missionary who passed away this past Thursday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we give uh, you thanks uh, for the witness of the UCC for standing with their LGBTQIA plus siblings in solidarity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We thank you again, God, for our UCC uh, brothers and sisters in Christ standing for love and inclusion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, as we gather today in this warm room, uh, we recognize that there are people who, who live their lives uh, facing the elements of our changing uh, weather patterns. God, we, we pray for the homeless in this community, that they may find shelter and war warmth and find a safe place to, raise, to, to lay their heads at night. We also ask that you work through us um, to be good stewards of the earth that you have given us uh, to occupy. Um, help us uh, to combat uh, climate change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, as we gather here today, we gather knowing that there are members of our community who, uh, who worry about where their next meal is going to come from. We pray for all those who are our food insecure in our midst, and we ask that you use us to help provide them with sustenance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, as we gather here today, uh, we gather on a day that's, that's not celebrated, but remembered throughout the world as a day uh, when we remember uh, lives that have been lost even before they enter uh, this world uh, through birth. Today we think of those who have lost children uh, due, to, um, due to lost pregnancies, uh, due to babies being stillborn, or due to any sort of other reason. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, I ask that you continue to be with Mary Herbers and her family as she continues in her health journey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we lift our silent prayers to you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, today I give you thanks for the love that Sarah and Jessica have found in one another and uh, give you thanks for their wedding that is happening later this afternoon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We're going to continue with our communion liturgy, so we all have a role to play here. Um, I'll play the role of pastor, oddly enough, and you can play the role of people. If you are watching at home, you can follow along on the screen, um, and you can say the words out loud as well, and you'll want to make sure that you have those communion elements gathered around you. So we continue with the liturgy. People of God, people of life, we gather as a holy communion for a meal that has been shared countless times in countless places and in countless ways. The first time the meal was shared, Jesus was gathered around a table with a ragged collection of people. Outcasts, betrayers, the power-hungry, the fragile, the lonely, and the lost. 
The first time the meal was celebrated, Jesus promised that it was for all time. That whenever the bread was broken and the wine was poured, wherever the story was told around a table, he would be there. Today we remember the story as it's been told a thousand times over. We eat the bread and we drink the wine and we affirm that we all belong at this table and that Jesus is here. So if we come to this table angry, let this bread and wine be our peace. If we come to this table betrayed, let this bread and wine be our grace. If we come to the table divided, let this bread and wine be our wholeness. If we come to the table in despair, let this bread and wine be our life. For this is a holy table with food to fill the hungry world and wine to quench thirsty hearts. Thanks be to God. When Jesus ate with friends, he took bread and after blessing it, he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends, saying, Drink, this cup poured out for you and for all people is the promise of God. Whenever you drink it, remember me. We remember Jesus' death and resurrection, our hope and our life. We break the bread and share the one cup. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God given freely to all of God's people, and absolutely everyone is welcome at God's table. We will commune by moving from the back of the worship space to the front, down the center aisle. I invite you to sanitize your hand, hands, reach in, grab one of those communion cups. You'll be greeted by a server serving the bread. Uh, then you'll spread out and go to the servers offering the wine. You'll dispose of your used communion cups uh, and the baskets off to the sides, and then we invite you to make your way back to your seats down the side aisles. If you prefer to have communion with a gluten-free bread, uh, just see the server who is uh, serving the bread, which is me, let me know, uh, and I will, I will meet that need for you. And if you prefer to have grape juice rather than wine, simply go to the communion server who is holding the silver chalice with the red ribbon tied around the bottom. For those of you at home, I hope that you didn't listen to any of that and that you just participate in God's meal of love and forgiveness. So that all being said, I'm going to invite our communion servers as well as our musicians who are receiving communion this morning forward. free to come forward. Feel the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Liam, the body of Christ given for you, buddy. Body 
the Christ we need. Thank you, the body of Christ we need. Then the body of Christ we need. The body of Christ given for you, buddy. The body of Christ given for you. I need the body of Christ given for you. Gave the body of Christ given for you. Choice the body of Christ given for you. Choice the body of Christ given for you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and in his peace. Amen. Uh, just a few announcements as we conclude our time of worship uh, this morning. Uh, first, I want to let you know uh, that I'm going to be out of the office most of this week uh, just to take a little staycation at home and uh, actually complete some honeydew items that I'm a little behind on. So um, I'll be in the office uh, Monday. Uh, if there's something that comes up, if there's a pastoral emergency or whatever, feel free to give me a call. Uh, just know that I won't be around the building all that much. Um, a reminder to our confirmation students that there's no confirmation class this Wednesday night, so uh, enjoy the night at home with your family uh, and listen to your parents. Uh, there's uh, The adult forum today is all about the educational trip that happened earlier this year to the Ark Encounter and the Creation Museum. Uh, we would invite you to stay and, and hear about that experience. Uh, kids will also have learning time today. I'll ask you to meet out in the gathering space. Uh, next week's adult forum, we will have an adult forum uh, next week where we're going to talk about the missions that we engage in as a congregation of, of faith. So I invite you to be a part of that as well. Also next Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m., uh, uh, some member missionaries are holding an open house uh, to thank Annette and Hank Homburger for their years of service here at People of Hope as they prepare to transition and move to Michigan here at the end of the month. So that is uh, an event that's open to absolutely everyone. So I'd uh, love to see you here sometime next Sunday between the hours of 2 to 4 to say goodbye to Annette and to, and to Hank as well. Uh, in your e-news this week, you will have noticed that the last Sunday of... Um, October. We are not going to have any adult forums. We're not going to have any learning time. Instead, we're going to have trunk or treat uh, during the learning time hour. So we would love for adults in the congregation to decorate your cars. There'll be a first, second, and third prize for the best decorated vehicles. We invite kids to come to church in their costumes. Adults, you can come to church dressed in your costumes as well. Uh, know that that's also Confirmation Sunday, so if you're thinking about what you might wear, know that we also are confirming someone that day. Uh, that Trunk or Treat event will start at about 10.30, so folks can come and worship and then 
go do whatever they need to do to their vehicles and then we'll start the, the uh, trick-or-treating business and it'll go from 10 30 to 11 30. now i need to tell you that my wife is going all out on this deal okay so you're gonna have to compete with her and if you don't know karen very well when she goes all out she goes all out okay fair warning all right so just know that that's happening, but come and be a part of it. It's going to be a lot of fun regardless. Um, big thank you to, to Joyce Stacy who put, uh, who uh, went through all the busy bags uh, that had been sitting dormant for two years. They are now outside and hanging up on hooks again. Kids, you can use those, have fun with them. Give Joyce a round of applause that you don't have to be bored by me talking anymore. Finally, next Sunday, when you come to worship, you will notice that there will be white binders at the edge of your aisles of seats. We're going to ask you to sign in if you're here, but also in those white binders will be the purple prayer cards. We will have a time during offering where we will collect those purple prayer cards, and because we are going to connect, collect those prayer cards during the offering, we need to make sure that people sign up to be ushers for that to happen. So, uh, look at that Sunday volunteer sheet. The ushering job might be one of the easiest jobs that we have here at the church, other than standing at the welcome table with a smile on your face. So, a sign up. I'll tell you all the stuff that you need to do uh, next week uh, when you show up and know that that is happening. Uh, Sarah. Yep. Yep. No learning time for the young, young uns uh, next Sunday uh, because of the MEA break, which is why we're not having confirmation as well. Uh, we'll just see them for Halloween. Also, uh, we have a very talented artisan in our midst, Mr. Rob Gust, <laughs> who has created some uh, uh, bespoke Halloween decorations that he is, he is selling uh, this morning to help raise funds for people of hope. So I invite you to check those out as you uh, leave uh, today in worship. So that all being said, I'm going to invite you to please stand as you're able to join singing our last song. Kids, you can come grab some instruments and play along with us because you'll want to because this song is a lot of fun to play. And Ted's vamping until I get this guitar on. You can go ahead and go. today's final blessing. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warmly on your face. May the rain fall gently on your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will. Thank you.